Pay close attention. The news you are about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, in the news today, we have the situation in Damascus going from bad to worse as now the drinking water is contaminated. We'll have that story along with the Turkey-U.S. relations not improving. I have a little bit of difference there on who's a friend and who's not. Right. And also another shooting, this time at a Florida airport. Mm -hmm. All these stories and many more. But first, you've heard about a swarm of insects, but how many of you have heard about a swarm of earthquakes? Mm -hmm. Well, the first week in 2017 shook people out of their beds in parts of California and Nevada, not by one earthquake, but multiple ones and a barrage of aftershocks all in one day. Wow. Now, the first of three strong earthquakes began shortly after midnight near Hawthorne, Nevada. The 5.7 magnitude quake was felt from Las Vegas to San Francisco. Uh, just four minutes later, the second uh, earthquake of equal strength began, followed by yet a third registering at 5.5 on the Richter scale. Uh, now, throughout the rest of the day, over 100 aftershocks could be felt. Wow. Seismologists like Lucy Jones from the U.S. Geological Survey are viewing it as a wake-up call mm. to prepare for the unexpected. But they say it's hard to determine when the next big earthquake will be. The 6.7 magnitude quake of Northridge, California in 1994 showed absolutely no warning signs. Now in an interview with CBS News, Jones explained, we have four shocks before about half of our big earthquakes in California, but they aren't usually coming as a swarm. Hmm. And you're seeing the numbers increase uh, consecutively. That's right. That's interesting. She continued, with Northridge, uh, there was nothing before it at all. The San Fernando earthquake didn't have any. Uh, the Loma Prieta earthquake didn't have an in immediate swarm. It had a magnitude 5.0 two months beforehand. Now, last September, there was another swarm of seismic activity which occurred along the Sultan Sea. That caused scientists to sound the alarm that the possibility of an even bigger quake could be about to take place along the San Andreas Fault. Mm -hmm. But the question remains, will there be another big one soon? Now, scientists cannot really answer that question. What they know is based off historical trends these swarms could be leading up to a major earthquake event. So in their eyes, it's not a matter of if it'll occur, but, but when. when. That's uh, correct. Interesting. Well, the next report brought terror of another kind to the Fort Lauderdale, Florida uh, airport on Friday, January 6th. A scene all too familiar nowadays. A man pulls out a gun and begins firing into a crowd of people. This time, it was at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport in the baggage claim area of Terminal 2. The shooter was brought into custody by federal agents, but not before he had killed five people and injured another six. The suspect, the suspect was identified as 26-year-old Esteban Santiago. He was a combat engineer in the, in the Alaska National Guard until August when he was granted a general discharge under honorable conditions. Interesting. Now, he had served in the Puerto Rico National Guard as well, uh, being deployed to Iraq from April 2010 to February 2011. Upon returning, he received the combat action badge for personally engaging enemy forces. Now, recently, Santiago had gone to the FBI concerned that his mind was being controlled by the CIA, trying to turn him into an Islamic terrorist. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he underwent some mental uh, health evaluations, which uh, found him to be sane, and they returned his gun to him, uh, the same gun he used in the shooting at the Fort Lauderdale airport just a few months later. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
While no one could have predicted this shooting, what's worse, authorities say, is that there was nothing that could have been done to prevent it from taking place. The gun used in the baggage claim shooting was checked as luggage by Mr. Santiago. The Transportation Security Administration, or the TSA, allows guns to be checked if unloaded and locked in a hard case, uh, but it also requires the ammunition be disclosed to the airlines prior to the checking in. Well, 15 years has passed since 9-11, and airports have increased security substantially. However, there are still some areas like check-in and baggage claim which are not included in the secured areas and are now called soft targets. Ron Hosko, a former assistant director of the FBI, explains to CBS News how soft targets are formed. He said, one of the great challenges of a soft tar target is it's like squeezing a balloon. Where I tighten up my security in one place, the balloon expands somewhere else and presents itself as another soft target. Uh, Hosko says securing areas like baggage claim in every airport would be uh, billions of dollars in the cost for these airports. So he says we have to put it in that broader perspective. Uh, you're more likely to die in a car accident on your way to home rather than to be in a terrorist strike at a U.S. airport. Uh, and that's the reasoning used to leave these areas unsecure. Not too reassuring to the families of those victims. That's right. Well, President-elect Donald Trump tweeted to Chicago's mayor this past week saying, Chicago murder rate is record setting. 4,331 shooting victims with 762 murders in 2016. Mm. If mayor can't do it, he must ask for federal help. Mm. Well, the death toll of 762 is the largest in two decades. Demonstrators took to Chicago's magnificent mile carrying a wooden cross for each person killed in 2016. It really puts into perspective the reality of so many lives lost. 2016's murder rate was 57 percent higher wow. than 2015 so it's not it's not decreasing by any means and of course was the largest annual increase in 60 years wow. yeah. well the chicago police know this problem needs to be tackled they already know why the sharp increase gang violence is apparent as eight out of ten murder victims is either a gang member or an associate to one now they also can see where the most of the violence is taking place in just five out of Chicago's 22 police districts. So they've narrowed it down to those five. Yeah. However, police have not answered the question that many people are asking. Is the spike in crime because cops are pulling back? Well, Susan Johnson, a counselor to families of the murder victim, seems to think they are. She says, we're leaving people in the aftermath without any support. They are crime victims. The city has plans to hire and promote 1,000 new officers during 2017. They also want to add body cameras to all the police districts. Uh, but will that be enough to make the change? Well, within the first five hours of the new year, they already had two homicides. Well, the, the citizens who are involved in these uh, shootings are definitely not responding uh, favor favorably, I guess, with the proposed addition of more police officers and we'll see how that turns out for them well Jeff uh, Susan Johnson really understood the problem and the solution when she said you know we're leaving people in the aftermath without any support and those grieving uh, will often look to take revenge uh, for the death of their loved ones and this only perpetuates the ongoing violence uh, what they need is for someone to teach them how to stop the violence and of course that, that's what they're calling for but they're not really getting the answers right and really how to forgive one another and uh, and build a positive character within themselves so that they they that that someone doesn't want to bring this harm right. to another individual that's right well, our next report shows the extreme need for lessons in compassion and respect. In a video stream live on Facebook, four African Americans can be seen beating and tormenting a mentally disabled white man. 
Now, President Obama called the video both despicable and terrible, and we do caution you, the video is very disturbing. That's right. The mentally challenged 18-year-old victim had been missing for two days. In the video, he can be seen being kicked, choked, cut, and forced to drink from a toilet. Officials say the four members, uh, tormentors, excuse me, uh, two women and two men had been texting the teenager's parents during the five-hour incident in a possible extortion attempt. The victim was eventually rescued by officers after he was found wandering the neighborhood, bloody and incoherent. Now, the four perpetrators were later arrested. All of them now face charges for hate crimes, as well as kidnapping, battery, and other offenses. Well, in other disturbing news, the hazardous effects of pesticides are once again gaining notice. We have Larry McGee following a tragic incident for us coming out of Amarillo, Texas, as well as several other reports. Larry, what do you have for us? A heartbroken father who had been using professional grade pesticides tragically lost four of his children when he unknowingly set off a chemical reaction that produced gases that ultimately poisoned them. Authorities say the bereft father caused the fatal reaction when he seeded pellets of a pesticide called weevil side under his home and then later attempted to wash them away. The water is said to have intensified the release of ammonium phosphite and killed the young victims as they slept. According to rules established by the EPA, purchase of the toxic agent is restricted to licensed professionals. But reports are that the man was able to bend the rules and acquire the poison from a friend. At the time of this report, hazmat teams are said to still be operating in the area that is the site of what officials are calling the worst poisoning accident in Amarillo's history. History is also being made on the Seven Hills this week as Vatican City opens the door for its first McDonald's. Local smaller restaurants are predictably concerned with the fast food giant's arrival and its presence is allegedly also drawing backlash from at least one Vatican official who is calling its arrival a disgrace, stating that the major chain sells food that he would never eat. The official sentiment are apparently out of sync with the top brass, however, as the Vatican is reported to own the building where the establishment is being housed and is getting its cut to the tune of $31,000 per month in rental fees. While the administration of Pope Francis has spoken out publicly against the pursuit of commercialism, its policies have reflected something different, with the Hard Rock Cafe also in its fold and a Starbucks scheduled to soon open. Other Vatican officials brushed the profiteering off as insignificant and a rather telling observation. They believe there are more serious problems in the world. According to one Catholic priest, there are greater scandals. There are still threats coming from American officials related to the Russian hacking scandal. The U.S. has set to level sanctions against nine individuals and entities, including the Russian spy agency, the FSB, and the GRU, which is Russian military intelligence, both of which are strongly suspected of being behind the alleged incident. The U.S. is ordering 35 Russian intelligence operatives and their families out of Washington, D.C. and California within 72 hours. Two mansions owned by the competitor in Maryland and New York have been shut down also, with President Obama declassifying Russian information to assist networks in the U.S. and overseas to identify, detect, and disrupt Russian cyber attacks as well. In defiance, President-elect Trump continues to dismiss the claims, stating that he thinks we need to get on with our lives and that computers have complicated lives very greatly and the whole age of computers has made it where nobody knows exactly what's going on. That drew barbed comments from at least one U.S. senator. Russia itself says if Washington takes new hostile steps, it will receive an answer. Any actions against Russian diplomatic missions in the United States will immediately backfire at U.S. diplomats in Russia, he said. The U.S.'s latest moves are in line with this promises for payback delivered by Senators Lindsey Graham and John McCain on CNN last week. 
The consequences for perpetuating the cycle of retaliation and war are sadly evident in Damascus, where for the last 10 days, millions of citizens have been struggling to secure safe drinking water after the customary water sources were reportedly targeted and contaminated by mercenaries. The government is moving to offset the crisis by employing alternative resources such as wells and distributing bottled water free of charge. But the efforts are only reportedly meeting about 30 percent of the demand. The attacks, which are being referred to as desperate, came just days after the government's perceived victory in Aleppo. Mercenaries have now reportedly escalated the conflict to new heights and have now gained control over an area in the country's capital of Damascus. Despite it all, Russia is still announcing plans to reduce its military presence in Syria following the ceasefire deal and is recalling its naval group, which has been stationed off the Syrian coast. President Putin is calling the mission a success and is heeding the advice of his defense ministry in making the reductions. But the Russian head says they will unconditionally continue to fight against international terrorism and will continue to support the legitimate Syrian government against terror. YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan, Jeff, back to you. Well, that will be interesting, Katan, to see if Russia actually completely pulls out of the area or just backs up a little bit to see what takes place. This time will tell. Well, Russia is planning to stage naval drills with the Philippines. Now, this after President Duarte's decision to downgrade their ties with the United States. Two of Russian warships with uh, within their Pacific Fleet docked in Manila on Tuesday for the purpose of taking part in bilateral Navy drills over the next four days. Special weapons and tactics will be on display during the drills. Hmm. The Philippine president uh, said that it was considering or he was considering Moscow's offer to sell submarines and drones to them in order to develop their military modernization. Uh, Duterte uh, expressed a desire to force stronger defense and economic alliance with Russia and China, expressing the desire to cut back its U.S. troop presence in the Philippines. Now, the country of China is willing to conduct constructive dialogue with the Vatican. The government is willing to narrow differences and seek improved relations between the two sides. That according to Ya Zhao Wen, the Director General for the State Administration for Religious Affairs. Now, these statements came at the 9th Chinese Catholic Representative Conference, which opened in Beijing for the first time in six years. Mm -hmm. North Korea is once again in the news as their talks for developing long-range nuclear weapons, according to them, has become a reality. North Korea has recently warned that its missiles are capable of reaching U.S. mainland. Uh, this is a response to South Korea's announcement of a deal with the United States to strengthen its own missile program. Now, this was also after South Korea announced that it would expand its missile range, allowing it to reach anywhere in the north. Not all are convinced of North Korea's claims. An analyst for CNN said that to acquire the capability requires a lot of testing. And considering what they've done so far, I don't find that credible. But I do think they're working toward acquiring that capability. Another analyst told Fox News that North Korea is probably three to four years from developing a capable missile and that the U.S. should really be concerned about the North the neighbor to the north, referring to China, saying also that we don't have a North Korea problem, we have a China problem. Hmm, interesting. Well, North Korea uh, has uh, in the past test fired rockets in the year 2006. Uh, a lot of activity was taking place there, 2009 and 2012. Uh, all of which broke up shortly after launch, so really no success in those missile tests so in far. years past, right? Well, a new conflict between the U.S. and Turkey over the use of Turkey's Incirlik Air Base during the U.S.-led coalition. Now, the Turkish Defense Minister uh, Fikri Esik said it's thought-provoking that any countries, especially countries with whom we have worked together in NATO for many years, countries who formed a coalition against Islamic State, don't support the operation Turkish Armed Forces and the Free Syrian Army have started in El Bab, which is a key town 
in the fighting against ISIL. Mm -hmm. He continued, uh, this causes Turkey, of course, to question the Insulik Air Base. Well, the air base is considered a key NATO air base in the Middle East and is the largest nuclear storage site in the region, supplying over 5,000 U.S. personnel, and it is used mainly by the U.S. Air Force to fly combat sorties against ISIL in Syria. Well, Turkey is voicing frustration with its U.S. allies, saying that it isn't, speaking of referring to the United States, it isn't supporting the fight against Islamic State. This is, of course, just a few of Turkey's allegations against the United States, while America tries to appear unfazed throughout this whole ordeal. Well, it may seem confusing to some who are keeping up with the relations between Turkey and the U.S., taking into consideration that everyone, from the U.S. president to the State Department spokesman, has called Turkey a friend and an ally, while Erdogan has criticized the U.S. with statements like, America, I've told you many times you either side with us or those terrorist nations. Mm, so like one saying, hey, yeah. we're all friends. The other one saying, look, you need to start doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that sounds like they're not on the same page. Uh, he also compared the U.S. soldiers, Erdogan did, to merely a terrorist organization dressed up with patches on their uniform, saying instead that they should wear patches of terrorist organizations and that a nation supporting these terrorists is not a friend of Turkey, but is an open enemy of Turkey. Well, a little further south to Israel, where Israeli police are questioning Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over corruption allegations. Now, details have not yet been released, but Israeli media says that Netanyahu is being investigated for receiving expensive gifts from Israeli and foreign businessmen. He also is facing a second criminal inquiry next week. Hmm. Netanyahu's family lawyer was also accused of facilitating a $1.5 billion submarine deal with Germany by getting inappropriate gifts. Uh, and this, of course, was uh, some time ago, not, not just recently. Netanyahu has also admitted to receiving gifts from a French billionaire who has been sentenced to eight years in prison over a nearly 300 million euro scam. Well, France's President Francois Hollande has arrived in Iraq to meet with French troops who are assisting government forces battling the Islamic State. His arrival came just a few days after a large-scale offensive, offensive in Mosul, which is still a stronghold of Islamic State. Now, experts fear that the military problem will lead to an even bigger problem, even bigger than Islamic State. Right. Uh, well, that's because the Mosul Dam, which is Iraq's largest dam, in, it is also in pretty poor condition. Well, the offensive could destroy it, causing it to collapse. Analysts say it would be worse than a nuclear bomb for devastation. They also say Iraq is facing potential catastrophe of biblical proportions. Well, the dam is 60 kilometers uh, north of the city and is the fourth largest in the Middle East. Uh, if its walls collapse, well, the citizens of Mosul could be destroyed within hours, literally wow. hours, killing about 1.5 million people Ooh, in its wake. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, journalist Adel Darwish said the situation is extremely dangerous. And Katani stated that the engineers can't perform much of their necessary maintenance unless they have some kind of a secured environment right. that they can work around um, in order to uh, do their inspections and so forth. Mm -hmm. So saying that they should create this secure barrier around the dam where they could bring in the equipment to repair the dam, relieve the pressure, and even clear the areas and small villages downstream of the dam as just a precautionary measure because the damage could be that uh, damaging, as mm -hmm. you as you mentioned, catastrophic. Right. Uh, concluding, he said, apart from that, he's not sure what else could be done. Mm -hmm. So they either repair it or face the potential uh, uh, a lot of lives being lost. That's the right, the damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not even the floodwaters from a broken Mosul dam could put out the raging fires in the hearts of mankind, as of course the hatred for their own fellow man is continually increasing and leading to a global nuclear conflict. But there is a way to cool the hatred burning in the hearts of mankind, and that is the peaceful solution found in your holy scriptures. 
What you can do is contact the House of Yahweh today and get your hands and your ears on spiritual food that will give you the strength to turn away from the hate and war and start living in the way of peace as taught by Yeshua Hawkins and the House of Yahweh. When you contact the House of Yahweh, don't forget to request your free copy of the Prophetic Word magazine and monthly newsletter. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites, www.yahweh.com, www.yisraelhawkins.com, or www.yahwehsbranch.com. You can also visit our website at www.ypnnews.com. For any emails, you can email at info at yahweh.com. For any of the international calls, you can call the number that's on your screen. And once again, don't forget to check out the Israel Says program by going to www.yisraelsays.com. You can pull up the search menu, punch in any word, and watch pages and pages of information come up on any subject topic. Well, get your pencil, paper, and of course your holy scriptures, because up next is Israel Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Hammerman. Thank you for watching.